Genesis 3, and we're going to take it to verse 8. 2 Kings 7, verses 3 to 8. I just want to extract a quick thought. If you have found it, say amen. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink. Actually, you know what? Let me take it up to verse 3. I'm sorry. And there were four lepers, leprous men, at the entering in of the gate. And they said one to another, why sit here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come and let us fall upon the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carried then silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it and came again and entered into another tent and carried thence also and went and hid it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Another day to give you the honor and the praise. Another day to speak to your people. Touch my mind and my heart. Help me to remain focused, to remain exact and true to what you have given me today. Hold the adversary at bay who would try to hinder and distract everything that you have come to do in this house. There is a word of survival, <laughs> a word of release, a word of breakthrough for that which you have brought here today. Let them receive it now in Jesus' name. Let all of God's people say in Jesus' name. You may be seated. I want to speak on this subject. It's time to rally. I, I want to speak on this subject. It's time to rally. And uh, I'm, uh, if you are one of those who are looking to give while I'm preaching, trust me, come. I'm not going to be distracted on any level. What was the message again I'm going to preach? Come on, talk to me. It's time to rally. I'm going to be preaching on it's time to rally. Amen. I'm going to give you a bit of a backdrop to this text. In chapter 6, a great famine had, had taken place in Samaria. And Ben-Hadad ben had laid a siege against Samaria. That meant no one was allowed to go into the city and no one was allowed to come into the city. This oftentimes was a common method that was used in Bible times by many armies who came to invade a particular area, town, or city. A siege was meant to starve the people of that city into surrendering or at least to make them so weak that they would not be able to fight, amen. And because they would not be able to fight, amen, it would be more easy for the enemy to come in and capture the city, amen. This famine, though, was so devastating that people were selling a horse's head, amen, and they were also selling dove's dung, amen, or poo-poo, they, they were selling this kind of stuff for a lot of money because food was scarce, amen. 
Food was scarce. The question is, would you pay $400 for an horse's head for dinner? Turn to the person and ask them. Would you pay $400 for a horse's head for your dinner? You can say anything you want to say now. <laughs> You, you can say anything you want to say right now. Amen. Because you are not in that situation. So you can say anything that you want to say now. Amen. I want you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, that this famine was so bad that one woman suggested to another woman that today we will eat your son and tomorrow we will eat your son. That's how bad this famine was. And so on that day, they boiled one woman's son. And they had him for dinner. And when the next day came, they went to the other woman and said, it's time for us now to cook your son. That we may eat him for dinner. But the woman hid her son. <laughs> Amen from the other woman, and so there was no meal that day. <laughs> Amen. The famine was so bad that folks allowed unbelief to take over, even when God was getting ready to send divine supplies to Samaria. It's unfortunate, though, that the prophet Elisha had to tell those folks, simply because of their lack of faith, simply because of their doubt, the prophet Elijah had to say to them that you will see it, but you shall not eat of it. That's how bad it was. That's how much unbelief had settled in. That he said, you will see what God is going to do, but you will not eat of it. It is against that backdrop now that we are dealing with these four lepers. It's against the backdrop of famine, the backdrop of adversity, the backdrop of cannibalism and unbelief that we are now introduced to these four leprous men in chapter 7. Four leprous men who have been quarantined, placed in isolation, and had their movements restricted. The fact that they were lepers tells us that Things had not been easy for them. They had to struggle day in and day out in order to survive. Lepers were not allowed to go into the city. They were forbidden by law and oftentimes were forced to dwell outside of the city. No doubt their friends within the city who oftentimes would supply them perhaps a few morsels of food and and, and perhaps this was the reason oftentimes that lepers would normally come to the gate of the city but not enter into the city just to see what morsel of scraps they can perhaps get from somebody that they, they knew at one time. Amen. But now really could not fellowship with or hang with anymore. However, things got so bad, amen, during this famine, that they said one to another, why sit we here until we die? Against the adversity, against the cannibalism, against the unbelief, against everything negative that was coming against them, the question was asked in the group, why sit we here until we die? With all they had to deal with, and we're going through, why didn't they call it quits and accept the fact that they had come to the end of the road? To me, it seemed reasonable to do that simply because there was no food available to them any longer. No doubt, those in the city were probably feeling the effects of the famine and barely had enough to sustain them through all of what they were dealing with. If the lepers took it upon themselves to enter into the city. And if the famine was there, they would be no better off. If they stayed where they are and did absolutely nothing, they would be no 
better off. Amen. And the fact that they have said, listen, why don't we just go over to the host of the Syrians and, and see what they're going to do with us. Maybe, maybe they will spare our lives. But if they don't, we will die also. It would seem that their situation was dark and, and real gloomy and there was no hope left in all of what they were seeing and all of what they were experiencing and, and going through. It seemed as if they had come to the end of the road. Amen. No doubt many would have accepted defeat already. Many would have said, you know what, I quit. I don't want to be a part of this anymore. Many would have said, this is too hard for me to go through and to bear. Some would say, this is not the will of God. Some would perhaps even be encouraged to curse God and die. But we have four leprous men who hadn't done any of those things. Up to this point in the text, they have no guarantees. <laughs> there is no guarantees as to whether they will live or die. Amen. What do you do, amen, when you're faced with such adversities and such trials and such hardships? What do you do, amen, when you can't see your way clear and everything around you seems to be doom, darkness, and despair. What I want you to see in this text, ladies and gentlemen, concerning these four lepers, is that there is a big difference between having a loser mentality and a nothing-to-lose mentality. There is a big difference between having a loser mentality and a nothing-to-lose mentality. The person with the loser mentality will look at everything that's working against them and accept defeat. In their eyes, they have already considered themselves a loser even before the situation is over or the problem has had a chance to turn around. The person with the loser mentality allows fear to take over their life to the point where they begin to accept and believe within themselves that things are not going to get better anyhow. The loser mentality is the kind of attitude that fails to produce when things are tough. Instead, the person accepts surrender and accepts the outcome of that situation. Jesus said to the rich young ruler, if thou be perfect, go and sell what thou hast. Give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. The Bible says, but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possession. I want you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that this young man had, in my opinion, a loser mentality simply because he failed to produce when Jesus asked him to. He failed to produce when Jesus asked him to. Instead, he chose to surrender to his outcome. He surrendered to it. The person with the nothing to lose mentality is completely different. Turn to the person beside you and say, which one are you so far? Wait for this next one. The person with the nothing to lose mentality is completely different. No matter how bad things may look, no matter how hard or how tough their problem may be, they will continue to operate from a positive state of mind. Even if the odds are not in their favor, they will accept their situation for what it is. But as soon as they realize what they're up against, and what it is that's coming against them. As soon as they see that there are more against them that are with them, that person with the nothing to lose mentality will start seeing their struggle from a different point of view. Their positive mindset becomes fearless instead of fearful. Since that person has already acknowledged that things cannot get any worse, they cannot go down any further. They begin to function on another level that will reverse the outcome of what they're going through. Hello, I hope you hear me, folks. In the book of Abaku, it's said here, <laughs> although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, 
and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. They have reached a state in their situation where it cannot get any worse. They have reached a state in their situation that things cannot get, my God, that things in their situation have reached rock bottom. But the Bible says that they said, and yet I will rejoice. They have come to a place, my God, where they're able to see things from a different perspective. Even though everything is against me, even though everything is coming against me, I will still rejoice. I'm getting ready to acknowledge that, yes, I might be at rock bottom. Yes, I may not have everything that's going for me. Yes, things might be difficult right now. But I want you to understand that trouble don't last always. Trials don't last always. Storms don't last always. I'm preaching to somebody on this Sunday morning. I want you to touch three people and tell them you need to get a different perspective. I don't know what you're going through, but shake them and say you need to get a different perspective. Oh, my, 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 my. I don't understand. I don't understand. My God, but as I begin to read the text, I began to see it much clearer, like Habakkuk did, that oh, all the stuff is going on in my life. My God, and it seems like I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to be able to get through things didn't come to me the way that it should. My God, things didn't mature for me on time like it should. The blessing that I should have received, I didn't receive it. Amen. My God, but yet, 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 I'm still going to rejoice. This guy had a nothing to lose mentality. He didn't give up. He didn't pack it in. He didn't quit. But he said, yet I will rejoice. That means if you still got a praise in you, you still have hope. My God, my God, my God. If you can let the devil know that you're still alive, that you're still in this thing, you still got hope, even though your change hasn't come yet. He said, yet I will rejoice. I will rejoice. Not in my situation, not in my circumstances, not in my calamity, not in my adversity, not with pain in my body. No, 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 not with sickness. But I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Some of you need to rejoice in the God of your salvation. The fact that he's the God of your salvation lets you know that he's able to deliver you. He's able to come through for you. He's able to release you. Come on, I'm talking to somebody on this Sunday morning. High five three people and tell him he's the God of your salvation. Come on, high five three people and tell him he's the God of your salvation. Go to three people and tell him he's the God of your salvation. If they ain't saying nothing, find three other people and tell him he's the God of your salvation. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, what turned the leopard situation around was a nothing to lose mentality. And if you're going to get through what you're going through, you need to have a nothing to lose mentality. Turn to the person beside you and said, don't get it twisted. You're not a loser. You just need to have a nothing to lose mentality. My God, my God, I know I'm preaching some. The Bible said that they rose up in the twilight to go up to the camp and when they were coming to the uttermost parts of the camp behold there was nobody there you don't hear what I'm saying the Syrians had fled God had caused them to flee people who have 
a nothing to lose mentality. They know how to rally. You don't hear what I'm saying. My God, my God. I said they know how to rally. When you look at Habakkuk, when he said, although the fig tree shall not blossom, what do you think he was doing? He was getting ready to rally. He said, neither there were herds in the storm. What do you think he was doing? He was getting ready to rally. When he said, I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. What do you think he was doing? He was getting ready to rally. You don't understand what I'm saying. Sometimes when you're going through your storm, sometimes when you're going through your situation you've got to know how to rally you've got to know how to muster up the strength and the courage the tenacity you know <laughs> my God, my God, they that have a nothing to lose mentality, they know how to muster up the strength and the courage after all that they have been through so that they continue to move on. They know how to recover and regain their composure. Folks who have a nothing to lose mentality are stress free, worry free, because they know it ain't over until God. God says it's over and if you know that open up your mouth stand to your feet and give God a shout of praise right now come on come on open up your mouth come on come on come on it's not over until God says it's over those who have a nothing to lose mentality know how to come from behind and win. Those who have a nothing to lose mentality, my God, know how. They know how to function. Ah, I said those who have a nothing to lose mentality, though the battle may be hot, though the storms may be raging, they can stay calm. Oh my God, they can stay calm in the midst of their situation. They know how to manage it. When you have a nothing to lose mentality, you're able to turn your situation around in your favor. You don't hear what I'm saying. You're able to turn the situation around in your favor. They sat there and said, why sit here until we die? No, 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 no. Let's go on to the Syrian camp. It took a whole lot to rally together, knowing that they had to go through the mental challenges they had to go through the physical challenges of being a leper I don't know if they had to hang on to one another but I do know they rallied and got up and put one foot in front of the other come what may we're gonna go to that camp and the Bible said the situation turned in their favor because they knew how to rally go to five people and tell them it's rally time it's time to rally sit in your situation and die it's rallying time don't sit in your frustration and die it's time to rally don't sit in your discouragement and die it's time to rally come on some of you are going through problems some of you are going through trials but it's rallying time now let the devil know that you're bouncing back let the devil know that you're not going to quit. 
Let the devil know you're up for the fight. Let the devil know that he which should have begun a good work in you, he's going to perform it. Shout, it's rally time. Shout, it's rallying time. Shout, 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 shout. It's time to rally. said I've been young and now I'm old I've not yet seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread Caleb was rallying we are well able to go up and take the country though there be giants in your land I don't know what giants are in your land but you need to rally from the situation. You need to rally from where you are right now. My God, my God, go ahead. Go ahead, start by praising him. Praise him in the dance. Praise him on the string instrument. Praise him on the loud sounding cymbals. Praise him on the high sounding cymbals. You're getting ready to go in. You're getting ready to take back what the devil stole from you. You're getting ready to recover all. It's time to rally. Get it. Get your mind together. Get your body together. It's rallying time. Muster up the strength. It's time to rally. It's time to tear down. It's time to rally. It's not time to look cute. It's not time to look pretty. You got a fight on your hands. You're down in the third quarter. You got nothing to lose now, but you got everything to gain. Turn to five people and tell them, this is your season to gain everything that the devil stole from you. This is your season to recover it back. It's rallying time. quarantine you don't let your problems keep you isolated don't let your trouble restrict your movement it's time to rally now you will not be quarantined you will not be isolated your movements will not be restricted for when you cross over the Jordan he will be there when you go up to the mountain he will be there when you go through the flood. He will be there when you go through trials. He will be there though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You ain't got to fear no evil because it's time to rally. Thou art with him. Your rod and staff, they comfort you because it's time to rally. everything to gain I said when you rally you got everything to gain I said when you rally you don't hear me when you rally you have everything to gain I don't care how bad it looks I don't care what you're going through I don't care what your situation looks like. It's time to rally in order to get the victory. You don't hear what I'm saying. You might be broken. You might be stripped. You might be hurt. But it's time to rally in order to get the victory right now.
I want you to understand right now. Our church, hear me now. Our church might be going through financial challenges right now. But we're rallying. I said it's time to rally. We're going to rally because we're going to get the victory. I need you to go to five people and tell them it's rallying time. We might be going through our challenge right now. We might be going through our setback. But this church knows how to rally. I said this church knows how to rally. We rallied from the gymnastics club. We rallied from Royal Orchard. And now we're at Ebenezer. And God has extended our borders. It's time. It's time to rally. It's time to rally. Touch five people and say, here we come. Touch five people and say, here we come. The devil hasn't seen anything yet. The devil hasn't seen anything yet. It's rallying time. Hope, Hope Christian Ministries. It's rallying time. Rally.